Hi, everybody. This is Adam Ellenboss from Nightlight Astrology, and these are December's horoscopes. So this is the horoscope for Gemini. Uh, you can look at this if you're a Gemini rising or a Gemini sun sign. And uh, we're going to take a look at um, big transits that are happening this month for you in the sign of Sagittarius. That's really where the total focus of the month is taking place, as well as the sign of Pisces, which land in your seventh and tenth houses. So we're going to focus on that. But before I do that, I want to talk about what's happening at the very start of the month. The very start of the month, there's sort of leftover, sort of the hangover of Venus opposite Uranus across your fifth and 11th houses. These are houses that were traditionally associated with good fortune and things that are pleasing and happy and exciting. Romance, sort of sexuality, children, the arts, creativity, also friends, groups, colleagues, ambition and uh, benefactors, like all like traditionally kind of fun, good topics. 11th was the joy of Jupiter. Fifth was the joy of Venus, the benefics. Like this is, these are good houses, but Venus opposite Uranus can be sort of disturbing. You're talking about relationships that can be disturbed, a creative process that can be a little bit disturbing um, where there's unexpected disruptions or agitations to relationships or love life or creative productions or collaborations. You can also look at um, there, there's also a theme to be fair and on the positive side, there's, there are themes of uh, creative innovation, originality, uniqueness, uh, independence and revolutionary uh, mindedness, and maybe even some sense of needing to defy traditions or norms. Uh, independence versus dependence, being on my own versus trying to, you know, harmonize with others. Really kind of intense themes, though, still lingering in the air to start the month there. But my sense is that given the fifth and the 11th house placement, something good will come of it for you. Now, um, uh, in the meantime, again, where's the major focus of the month? It's definitely between your seventh house and your 10th house. That's where everything's happening this month. All right, let me take you through it one by one. So I'm going to give you an overview. Here's the sun on December 2nd, squaring Mars and uh, Neptune, um, you know, pretty closely in, in Pisces. Then you go forward to December 7th. And uh, from that space, then you have a new moon in Sagittarius, also square to Mars and Neptune and Pisces in your 10th house. Uh, you go forward from there. And by the time you get to, mm, let's see here, December, I think it's going to be about December 21st. Uh, yeah, by the time you get to December 21st, then you're going to have a Mercury Jupiter conjunction in your seventh house. A couple of days after that on December 24th, you're going to have Mercury in Sagittarius now squared to Neptune and Pisces, right? So you can, you get the point all month long, Sagittarius seventh house squares to Neptune and Mars in Pisces in the 10th house. So rather than going through each one, when I see this many things happening in two houses repeatedly over and over and over again, I just focus on the house topics. I find that that is the best way of not making the forecast overly complicated. So that's how I'm doing it this month. What does that mean for you? Seventh house of the house of relationships, marriage to a certain extent, your social persona or your social life. Tenth house is a place of advancement, career, promotion, your sense of calling in the world. So when you put those things together, you just very basically could say this is a month where the themes of your relationships or your social persona, your social life and your professional life or the theme of advancement and kind of moving forward in your path, even if you're struggling to move forward or struggling to figure out what you want to do, career house and relationship house are highlighted. There's tension between them all month long, which means that they might be looking for compromise or balance between the two areas of life all month long. So, uh, what else can be said about these two areas? Well, um, the Neptune and Neptune and Mars in the tenth house may ask you to make a a sacrifice in the workplace. Like Neptune and Mars is sort of like Jesus. It has that feeling of crucifixion or of martyrdom or of dying for something or kind of you know, full faith and commitment, like a, a visionary, a crusader, but a real emotional romantic quality to it as well. Sometimes falling on your own sword, you know, that kind of thing. Don't become a victim of it. You know what I mean? Don't give too much if you don't, you don't, you really shouldn't, if it'll drain you. Um, on the other hand, 
you may really rise in the eyes of others because you're prepared to make some kind of sacrifice right now. Or you could also find that this month is just toned in general by the themes of your relationships and faith and belief and hope and growth and how you know, important people in your life are challenging you to grow spiritually or emotionally or to commit more to something, which isn't always easy for you as a Gemini because what you're good at is really sort of lateral movement. You're, you're good at uh, one idea leading to another, leading to another, going in a, in a lot of different, you know, sort of lateral directions, not as much of, you know, focus and ascend in one straight direction for the most part. Sagittarius is the exact opposite, right? It's, it's, it's more about, you know, expanding. It's about faith. It's about, in some sense, certainty and moving in a, in a, in a direction. The, the Sagittarian, the centaur, and the bowman, the, the, the fiery arrow pointing to the stars. It has more of that ascend, transcend kind of feeling to it. So how are other people asking you to commit or uh, sharpen your focus or something like that? And how much of a sacrifice does it feel like to you? But on the other hand, what is there to gain right now if you can narrow your focus a little bit more? Those might be questions to ask. On the other hand, questions about are you being too easily persuaded? Are you getting lost in someone else's trip or someone else's charisma or something like that? Those are possibilities as well. Um, I think it's likely that the level of depth and excitement and fun and even... um, unexpected inspiration in your relationships this month could be, it could be really great. So I don't think it's necessarily a bummer, but you do, I think you want to be careful because very strong, convincing, persuasive people could enter, be entering your life right now. um, And throwing up questions about who you are into question. Uh, It's in some ways, air signs like to remain aloof This is, you know, your home planet, Mercury, is in its opposite sign, which is a place of its detriment. It's Jupiter's place. So that plus Neptune, everything, you know, you're you're trying to feel your way forward and define things socially, maybe professionally in ways that are uncomfortable for you. You have to put yourself out there more than you're comfortable with or things like that. So that's how I'm reading it, but I would love to hear your comments and hear what you guys experienced this month from all my Gemini people out there. Um, and, you know, tell me your stories because I learn a lot from that and then I fine tune my work over time as well. So uh, that's what I've got for you guys uh, this month. A few other little transits to mention. Um, on December 20th, I like this transit a lot actually. On December 20th, you're going to see that the sun in Sagittarius is making a trine to Uranus in the 11th house from your seventh. I like this as a really exciting and dynamic kind of social moment for you where you're meeting someone inspiring who's introducing you to a group that's going to change your views or uh, finding allies and inspiration in other people. Uh, I, I like this transit for you. I think it's going to be really interesting. The other thing that you should look for is um, <clears throat> on December 21st into the 22nd, of course, it's the winter solstice. Sun moves into Capricorn in your eighth house, full moon in Cancer in your second house. The nodes of the moon just moving into this house. Both of these transits are going to highlight second eighth house matters that will be foreshadowing second eighth house matters that will be really present next month when eclipses start happening for the first time now in Cancer and Capricorn after being in Leo and Aquarius for last year and a half or so. So you're, you're looking at... Uh, eclipses and and big energy starting to come in toward the end of the month, foreshadowing major changes that'll be taking place in January across two houses that have a lot to do with money, have a lot to do with finances, have a lot to do with personal resources and the resources that come from other people, motivations and desires materially, uh, priorities financially, uh, as well as topics like um, uh, loss and diminishment materially versus gain and benefit materially. North node in the second house uh, and the, you know, south node in the eighth house, uh, the eclipses that take place around these will tell a story, a kind of back and forth about gain and loss and a a shift in values or reprioritization of assets or even investments in the next year and a half. So this is an interesting one to keep our eye on. We'll visit it again next month for sure. So that's what I've got for you, Geminis, this month. I hope that this was interesting. Again, please leave your comments. I learned so much from them. And uh, hey, next time I see you, it'll be January. So have happy holidays and a great new year. Hey, take care, guys. Bye.